and grow YouTube show. Silence is a sacred and scarce commodity in the United States. There are very few places that aren't affected by noise pollution. When I lived in New York City, I was lucky to be a sound enough sleeper that the speeding cars on the nearby highway and random 4 a.m. construction crews and garbage trucks never woke me up. But my sweet partner was not so lucky and needed to sleep with foam earbuds every night. When we moved last year to five acres in the middle of the woods, the silence was deafening. I only truly understood the concept of sound pollution and how accustomed I had grown to New York City's white noise, like these airplanes we've been experiencing, after I experienced its absence. My body and nervous system were so unused to being in the quiet, it actually triggered anxiety in those beginning few weeks. In those first few weeks, me and my husband would look at each other and marvel at how quiet it was outside. I couldn't stop listening to the to the crescendo of wind rustling in the trees and the beautiful soprano trills of the local bird chatter, which we are enjoying today. As I began to unwind from my unwittingly noisy lifestyle, I slowly felt my entire being relax and embrace a level of calm that I thought was only reserved for vacations. It felt like my entire body unclenched a little bit, even though I never realized it was tense to begin with. I had been living with this tension for 10 years as I lived in New York City. We've all grown incredibly accustomed to the ambient noise of cars, factories, construction, airplanes, but our nervous systems have not. No one understands this better than Gordon Hempton, an acoustic ecologist known as the Sound Tracker. He travels the world capturing disappearing natural soundscapes and is known for his fight to preserve the natural soundscape of one square inch of the whole rainforest in Olympic National Park which Hempton has described as the quietest place in the country. Hempton predicts that natural, science, uh, natural silence could be extinct in the next 10 years unless action is taken to preserve it. Since we can't put traffic, running refrigerators, washer dryers, or flight paths on mute, drowning them out with, natural record, with, sounds, with recordings of natural sounds is our next best option as a fun way to bring the outside in. This is something that I've started applying to my day-to-day -day life as a uh, when I work from home, and it has wildly transformed my work day. I can't recommend it enough. So you can find recordings of natural scouts, soundscapes so easily on Spotify, YouTube, or Gordon's website. Um, I found an eight-hour YouTube video of nature sounds that's filled with bird song, and I play it throughout my work day. Once the recording is over, I know that my eight hour workday is up and it's time for me to get outside and leave my computer. Uh, the sounds of the rainforest have underscored the entire writing process for this book. And I personally find that I'm always more focused and productive when listening to sounds of the forest instead of office silence. There's something about bird song that immediately, or for me personally, and once again, all these senses are so unique to each of us, bird song and like babbling water, like a babbling brook, there is something that immediately signals like a full body whoosh of relaxation. Uh, for you, what are what are the sounds that, that stimulate you the most? Oh, there's a long list there. Yeah. So as a kid growing up in Northern New Jersey, mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time running around the woods near my home. Okay. And it was there that I learned a very important thing is the joy of silence and silence not necessarily nothing around you yeah it's you allowing yourself to be silent and calm and taking out yourself away from the voices and the lists in your head that you run through all day long and surrounding yourself with those soft noises of running water the waves crashing on the ocean this kind of we know it is sometimes referred to as white noise not airplanes. I know. <laughs> Not perfect. <laughs> but the idea that these sounds are continuous and calm, rhythmic. Yeah. Uh, I've had the great fortune to travel to some incredible places, including the whole rainforest, which really is one of the most incredible. Has anyone ever been there? I at least hope that one person, if you ever have an opportunity to travel in the Pacific Northwest, it's a bit of a hike from Seattle, is a place called the Ho rainforest. It is one of the few temperate rainforests in the world. Most rainforests around the equator. This is in the Pacific Northwest and it gets a tremendous amount of rain. 
it's probably one of the most magical places and you can probably google a picture of it now and understand why the trees are completely carpeted in mosses it looks like a dinosaur should come out of the ferns any minute. <laughs> and when you get there you hear the softness of the rain and the mist in the forest and because of the way the environment is and the cushions of moss and the ferns and the leaves it absorbs noise it's like as anyone, I hope people have done this, stood outside in a snowstorm, mm -hmm. and oh, you, yeah. that's, that sound of that silence is remarkable, is because all of that softness absorbs the sound, mm -hmm. and the whole rainforest does that, and you realize there's a moment, and you kind of feel this eerie presence, and what it is, it's the sound of that silence, mm -hmm. and you wind up stopping, and you realize that this surrounding you is this quiet that we don't experience in our lives. I'm a big music fan and always have been, and I realize that time goes on is the reason why I love music is it's a way, it's a barrier to surround myself with sounds I enjoy, sounds that impact me in a positive way, rather than this unpredictable cacophony that can be a city or an urban environment. Uh, and probably my uh, the sound moment that always I guess you could say it's a core memory for me. Yeah. Uh, a year ago, after my mother passed, I traveled to Colombia with my partner in South America. Went on a hike with some friends up into the mountains to observe orchids in the wild, because that's what I do in my free time. Uh, it's a weird, <laughs> the weird things I do in my free time. Is, but there was a moment where we reached the top of the hill, which was no small feat considering the altitude. And you stop. And as you're trying to catch your breath, you realize that you hear nothing but the wind, the rustling of some leaves. And it is quiet enough that even in the distance, the only other noise are the wings of the hummingbirds that are buzzing around you. And it, to me, was just such a remarkable moment because that sound, if you think about a hummingbird, it's not very loud, was loud in that environment mm -hmm. and so that hum in the distance of hearing the hummingbirds going from flower to flower was just the cool breeze itself you realize how precious silence can be and seeing people nodding over here and i love that is that you know take a walk in a snowstorm go out into the woods but go out further into the woods and sit and surround yourself and take in that silence. It's very, very healing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very therapeutic. And as you say, it kind of allows you to relax. It relieves so much of the tension. Uh, it really is something that is truly becoming precious. Yeah. I think too, especially for us living in New York City, where we're so used, we're so used to these noises. And, you know, I mean, I read it, I, I just read the portion about it in the book, but I had no idea how much it affected me until I had the space to not be affected by it. And it's important. Um, it's really important. And it can look really different for different people, right? You find what is your core memory? What is that hummingbird for you? And, and find it and replicate it to the best of your ability, whether you're doing it in nature when you can, or if you have to. <laughs> this is so perfect. Are you kidding me? This is hysterical. Um, when you uh, find it in nature or find it, you know, find recordings of it. And speaking of the Ho rainforest, it's H-O-H. I talk about in my book, I actually have the coordinates for Gordon Hempton. Um, there is one square inch that has no noise pollution. Uh, I, I believe the definition is there's no po noise pollution for 15 minutes because there now is some flight, there's some flight patterns, but there are the, the coordinates for it if, if you want to go visit it. And he actually on his website, which is also in my book, has recordings that you can go onto his website and listen to what actual true nature silence is. And it's pretty <laughs>